welcome back to the big sew along I'm Ginny and that was my dog Mushi I thought I would start with her today because she is currently sitting with me in the sewing room and um, she might start snoring at any moment so if you hear something that sounds like a train going through my sewing room it's actually my dog um, today we are sewing Simplicity 9044 which is the shirt I'm wearing right now. I'll put a picture of it right here for you. Um, I guess we'll just get right into it. I, I wanted to say, um, if you do, guys didn't see uh, Stephanie from Stephanie Feral Focus last Friday on her last Friday shows, she cracked me up with like the most hysterical like story of um, a sewing mishap, which we've all done a million times but I'm serious you guys I was so laughing and then um, when I was working on this shirt I put my you'll see in the tutorial but I put the sleeves on backwards um, so I felt like that was kind of my like comeuppance for thinking that Stephanie's uh, mess up was so hysterical now hers is actually funnier but mine was like a giant pain so to fix so, anyways, um, let's see. A couple of things I will tell you about this pattern before we actually get into the tutorial. Um, let's start with our usual. Uh, sizing on this pattern is, this was 6 to 14, but I, I think that there's, there must be another size also. But this, this one, yeah, because it goes up to 24. So, um bust size 30 and a half to 46 um the one i made is a medium and i think that um is that right is it a medium or a 14 it's a 14 i made the 14 and that is for a bust size uh 36 the final measurement on this is almost 50 inches at the bust. So a lot of ease, like a lot of ease, just so you guys know. Also, this does have a drop shoulder, comes down to about here. Um, and the armhole, I don't know if you can see, is also pretty, pretty big. So it's generous, generous size. Um, I am sewing today view B which is this one right here. It's supposed to be the tunic length. It has an asymmetric, like a curved hem there. And it also has these, um, these little tabby things that hold your sleeve up. Um, and then the only thing that I didn't do from view B, view B and view A have um, this traditional side seam pockets. I used the pockets from View C, which are a little bit different. They're very similar to a Marcy Tilton pocket that we used um, a while back. So, I'm not going to show you every step in this because a lot of that would just be redundant because um, it's like shoulder seams and side seams, obviously. Um, I did do, I will show you the front placket, which is with obviously where the buttons and buttonhole are, um, the pleats. The collar, which is really similar to one we just did, the cuffs, and then, um, yeah, I think that, oh, the tabs, and to making the tabs. Okay, so the only other thing I need to say about this before we go to the tutorial is that I shortened mine a total of three inches. Um, one inch above the waist and then two inches below the waist. And you can see in the pictures how long that is on me. Again, I'm 5'4". Um, okay, cool. So let's go to the uh, tutorial, and then we'll come back and talk some more. On both front um, pieces, we have a fold-over facing. So this is folded over. I have my inner facing right here. Then it's folded over one inch and then another inch. But check your markings on your pattern to see where that is. Then... We're going to base this down along this edge right here, but don't base it all the way to the hem. Um, stop right about here, like right about there. Give yourself an inch or two at the bottom because we're going to need that when we go to hem this later. But you can go ahead and base that down now. 
And then we're gonna start on our pleats. Okay, so once we have our front facing uh, base it down, we're gonna go back here. We're gonna put our tissue paper back down and oops, right here at the bottom of these first pleats, I'm just gonna put a pin like that. And maybe one more right here. And then I'm gonna flip this up and I'm gonna put my pins back just through the fabric so I know where they are. Right there. And right there. Then we're just gonna take this pattern piece off. With our right side facing up, we're just gonna find our first two notches, which are right here. We're gonna match those up all the way down to this pin. We want that to be on the straight grain as much as possible. So like that, all the way down to this pin. Right there. Now I'm just gonna press that really quickly, just like that. So when I open it out, you can see there's a nice crease right there. That's my pleat. Now the next pleat is the next two notches. I'm gonna place those wrong sides together, just like we did with the first one. And I'm gonna fold it all the way down to this pin. keeping it in a straight line, just like that. Now I'm gonna go press that one. Okay, that's two done. Now we're gonna keep going. I have one more in this section and then I have three more over here. No, I don't, I have one, two, three. I think I have three more here and then three more here. So I have seven more to do. We also have the other front and we have the back and we're gonna do them all, all exactly the same way. I am uh, gonna go ahead and keep pressing these. <clears throat> Be really careful when you press them that you don't unpress or mess up the press of the pleat you've just done. So on that last one, my first pleat was right here. On this one, I pressed it from this side so I can be sure that I'm not messing that up. And the same thing will happen here. I'll put this one together and press it right along this edge, making sure not to mess up those other pleats. Then, all we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our sewing machine and we're gonna lay down our pleats just like this, just as they're pressed. And we're gonna sew them down with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, which is right here. You can put pins in here if you want to, but really with your pressing, depending on um, what your fabric is like, you probably will be okay without that. The only thing is, you just want to be sure you're stopping, that they're all stopping in the same spot. There's the point of my putting pins in the bottom, and now I've lost my pins. But this one would end right here, so I would just put a pin right here and keep that in there until I have all of those pleats done, and then I would move on to the next section. All right, I hope that makes sense. Okay, so here we have our pleats all done, and once they're all finished, I don't know if you can see this. Um, I pressed them all towards the, out, away from the center, both in the front and in the back. They're all pressed outwards. Um, also, you can see here, I've tried to make my pleats all match up on the shoulders. It's not 100%. This side is better than the other side, but just do your best. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is work on our collar and we're going to take I'm going to use my um, color that's interfaced to be the outside I prefer it that way but if you want the one that is non interfaced to be on the outside you can use that it doesn't I don't know that it matters okay so we're gonna pin this on and I'm gonna start by matching up my center back 
and you have um you're not going to be able to see it on mine because it's really light i used a yellow chalk on this so it wouldn't show on my shirt but there's a dot right here and that should match up with this shoulder seam and then we have a dot over here that will match up with this shoulder seam I'm doing this all kinds of backwards like that now when we get around to the front edges this front collar piece needs to extend three eighths of an inch past the edge of your shirt so i'm just going to go ahead and i don't think we have a notch or anything there but we're just gonna like that's about three eighths right there and pin that down like that now we can go in here and fit this in like that and you may have to do a little clipping either in your shirt or in your collar to get it to lay nicely but remember either way you only have a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance along this neckline so don't clip any further than that okay so it should look something like that and we're just going to go to the sewing machine and sew that from edge to edge with our 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and then we're going to press that seam up into the collar so the collar's out like this and the seam is pressed up into it so this is the outside of our collar so far and this is the inside you can see how my seam allowance is pressed up into the collar now the next thing we're going to do is take the other piece of our collar and you're going to turn this long edge um, it's the one with the notches in it you turn that up three eighths of an inch and press it and then we're going to put this right sides together with the collar that's on our shirt now once we have this pinned in like this we're just going to go back to our sewing machine and sew from here all the way around to here with our 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Then we're going to clip those corners, press the seam allowances, and then flip this over to the wrong side. So this is our neckband pretty much finished. I forgot to say though before you stitch this down, you're going to want to understitch this seam allowance to your facing. I don't, maybe I did say that before. Then you're just going to press this to the inside and we're going to sew that down with our stitch in the ditch right through here just be sure you're catching the facing on the wrong side like that also be sure like my facing you can see that folded under edge keeps popping out so just make sure it's pr it's turned under and then pin all the way through here all along that seam line right at your neck edge and then you're just going to go in with your sewing machine and sew right along, right in that ditch between your collar and your shirt. And then we're going to move on to our sleeves. So the first thing we're going to do on here is we're going to mark this stitching line. And I'm not going to show you on my shirt because you're not going to be able to see this faint yellow chalk on there. But all you're going to do is you're going to mark your stitching line and you're going to stitch right along this line. Until you get up to here where this dot is, you're going to stitch across here with one stitch and then come all the way back down here. So my stitching is a V right here. And now we're just going to clip right into this, right down the center. And you want to get really close to that tip, but you don't obviously want to go through your stitching. Okay. Then we're going to, this is the right side of my sleeve. So I'm going to turn this to the wrong side. So it's like this. And I'm going to take one of my lap pieces. The folded edge is right here. I'm oh, sorry, I don't think I said that. These are our continuous lap pieces. Um, and the pattern piece looks like this. And it doesn't matter which one, but on one of these ends, these long ends, you want to fold over one quarter of an inch to the wrong side. Okay, so this is the right side of our continuous lap. This is the wrong side of our shirt. And we're going to open this up like this so it's almost a straight line and you're just going to place this right along the edge again right side of my placket to the wrong side of my shirt and actually i'm going to turn this this way because once again if you have 
this part of your shirt facing upwards when you're sewing, you have a better chance of not making a pucker here at the corner. So I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So we're just gonna pin this down like that. And then we're gonna get right to the center, which is right there. And then we're gonna kind of turn that out of our way and we're gonna come down the rest of the way that as straight as possible and you can see here I have a little bit of extra on my lap it doesn't matter that can just get cut off so now we're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to sew this with just a quarter of an inch seam allowance with the shirt sleeve side up you can sew right along here and you can stop right here lift your presser foot get all of this out of your way and then continue on this way and that way you'll avoid getting a pucker right here at that tip all right so do that to both of your sleeves so here's our little placket sewn on, and what I said before was to um, sew it on this way with your placket on the bottom, and sew along this edge on top of the shirt. I think I might have been wrong. I tried it that way, and this still got really caught up in the machine, so I tried it on the second one. I tried it this way with the placket on top, and that definitely worked better, at least for me. So you may wanna try it both ways and see which one works better for you. Once you get that on there, you're gonna press that seam allowance towards the placket, like that. And then all we're gonna do is open this up like this, fold the placket in like that, and over our seam line. And then we're just gonna edge stitch it right along here. Once you have that edge stitched down, you're gonna fold the placket to the back. So that's our placket. This is the right side of our shirt. We're gonna fold that together like that. And then you're just gonna sew a little row of stitching. I think you can probably see it here online, right here, a little diagonal. And that is actually just gonna help keep that placket to the back. Then you're gonna open this out like this. And the short side is the um, front of the shirt. So fold your placket that direction. And then, actually I'll show you this way is better. <laughs> this edge, the placket piece that's on the front edge, you're gonna wanna base that down just right here, just right across there. So when we put our cuff on, it'll stay in place. Now we need to do our pleats. And you see my notches right there? We're just gonna fold those so the notches are together. The pleats are on the outside and you're gonna fold that pleat towards the placket, like that, and pin it in place and do the same one, same thing with this one over here. Like that. And then you're gonna base across those edges. And then we're gonna come back and do our cuff after we put our shirt on, our sleeve on our shirt. But before we get that far, we have to work on our little um, tabs that hold up the sides. They look like this, actually. The pattern piece looks like this, and you'll have four of them. Two of them will be interfaced. You're just gonna put them right sides together and sew at a three-eighths of an inch seam allowance all the way around. And then we're just gonna trim those down. Then you're gonna turn those inside or right side out and press them. On mine, I actually did a row of, this is what it said. I did a row of edge stitching all the way around the edges here. Um, it doesn't say to do that in the directions, but I think it lays more nicely. And then you're gonna go ahead and put your buttonhole in here, and the marking on mine is on the wrong side, but it's right here. I am not putting a buttonhole in mine yet because I don't have my buttons yet. Once you get that done, you're gonna baste this raw edge closed. This is the wrong side of our sleeve. So we're gonna take our tab that we just finished, and we're gonna put it, there's a little mark 
uh, it should be a little mark on the inside of your sleeve. We're gonna put our tab right on that mark and the, with the point of our tab facing up towards the cap of the sleeve. And we're gonna sew this down right here on this 3 8 of an inch seam line seam allowance, which is easy to tell because that's where we basted it. Once you've sewn that down, you're just going to trim that really close, and then you're going to fold this down this way, and you're going to stitch it again right along here at about a quarter of an inch from that original seam. So this is what our placket looks, our, uh, not our placket, our tab looks like once it's sewn in. And you can see it's clean right there, it's been sewn twice, looks good. So now when it's when your shirt is rolled up, this will fold to the right side and get buttoned up here. Because of that though, you just want to be sure that the when you lay this tab down, <clears throat> it might not matter. Your your tab might be the same on both sides, but mine definitely has a right side and a wrong side. So when I laid it down the tab, when I lay it like this to sew it the first time, the right side is facing down, just so you know. All right, so the next thing is um, just to sew our sleeves in. Okay, guys, now for our cuffs. <laughs> Before we go any further, I have to point out that my sleeves are on backwards. I said before that this side, the short side of your sleeve, is the front, and the one with the pleats is the back, but that's wrong. This should be the front, and this should be the back, and so my sleeves are on opposite but it's not gonna affect the way we put our cuff on it just means that I have to take my sleeves out and redo them so what we're gonna do for our cuffs is um, we're gonna take our cuff piece which is piece number seven it looks like this the unnotched edge we're gonna fold under five eighths of an inch and press it like this and then we're gonna trim that down to about a quarter of an inch then we're gonna take this side my dots on this one are right here and right here. And we're gonna place those dots right on the edge of our cuff. Now you wanna be sure that your little flap, this is the one we base it down. Let's make sure it's still laying flat under there. That pin, my dot, is gonna go right on the edge of my fabric there. Right like that. And the other one is going to go right on the edge on this side. And again, just make sure that's not coming out. Like that. And then you do have a notch in here, which should match up with this notch. You have two pleats, and then you have another notch. Let's make sure that that's... And then meeting up right there. All right, and then we're just going to go to the sewing machine and sew that on with our 5 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, once we get our cuff sewn on there, that's the right side, this is the wrong side, we're going to press that seam allowance up into the cuff, like that, all the way across, and then we're going to fold this back to the wrong side actually to the right side of your shirt but inside out right sides together and when you do that you're going to want to be sure that the this edge the one you're folding over comes just past where your seam line is that you just sewed so my seam line is here and the edge of my cuff that i just folded over it's here it's about like an eighth of an inch Gonna press that down, or sorry, pin that down there. Do the same thing on the other side. And then you're just gonna sew those short ends close. So from here to here, and from here to here, with your 5 8 inch seam allowance. When you've done that, we're gonna clip these down your corner nice and short there put that off and same thing on this side and then we're going to flip this 
cuff to the wrong side of our shirt. Now we're going to go ahead and press that down so it's nice and flat. And then we're going to stitch in the ditch here between our cuff and our shirt. Right here. All the way along that seam line. Being sure you catch the back side of your cuff when you do that. Then, really, all we have to do is our hem, our buttonholes, and our buttons. On this one, for view B, you're really just going to fold this hemline up 5 eighths of an inch. I'm going to, I've searched mine off, so I might just fold it up 5 eighths of an inch and stitch it down. You can fold it up 5 eighths or like half and then another half to get to your 5 eighths. However you want to do it is fine. Um, but remember, this is our so front, this is our facing. We don't, we have this basted down just to here. Before you sew your hem, you're going to want to fold that to the right side of your shirt and stitch that down just across the bottom of the hem here at 5 eighths of an inch and then do your hem. That way you'll have that nice finished edge there. And once you've done that, you're going to want to go back over your basing stitches with regular stitches on both of your front pieces. And I think that's it. Buttonholes and buttons and you're done okay so that is the tutorial um i will tell you the fabric i use the fabric suggestions which i didn't say before chambray cotton lawn gauze lightweight cotton lightweight shirtings linen voile yeah and actually i'm looking here at the, it does have the finished measurements on here so for the the um size 14 it says the finished measurements are 46 and a half uh for the size 24 the finished measurements are 56 and a half and um for the size six the finished bust measurement is 40 inches 41 inches anyways um yeah so i used a uh, cotton gauze it's a, got a little bit of a crinkle texture in it. It also has like a stripe and has a tiny bit of lurex. This is a fabric I got from Latoff Fabrics in San Diego. Um, I've talked about them before, but I'll link them below. She always has some lovely pieces. Um, what I don't like about this particular shirt is probably the fabric. Uh, not that I don't like the fabric. It's just that because it has a little bit of a crinkle to it, um, as I was sewing, it was hard to keep it from growing even though I washed and ironed it before I started cutting and everything, you know, with a crinkle texture, the more you iron it, the less crinkle there is, which means the fabric grows longer and it'll shrink up, of course, when you wash it. But sewing it was just a little bit of a challenge because of that. Um, this pattern calls for um, 13 half inch buttons for view A, 14 buttons for view B, and 8 buttons for view C. I um, did not have 14 half inch buttons. Um, I never think to buy buttons and I have no idea why. I always need buttons. But the thing is I have a huge stash of buttons so I just always assume I have buttons. I don't have 14 of any kind of button. So I use what I had and I'm, I'm probably going to just have to replace these because I'm missing the buttons on the actual cuffs of the shirt. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, so my overall take on this is it's a really it's a good pattern. It's pretty easy to follow. Um, this pattern I don't think I said this in the beginning. This pattern has a center back seam, <laughs> and I can't figure out why. I did not cut mine with a center back seam. I just cut it five inches five eighths of an inch in from that where would be the center back seam and cut it on the fold. The only thing I can think is that if you have a narrow fabric and a larger size, then you might need to cut the back twice because it might not fit on that. But I think if you have a 16 inch fabric, I think that anybody's going to, you're going to fit all of these on that, on the fold. 
I don't know. I, I feel like it, I didn't really understand the, <laughs> I just didn't understand the center back seam. Um, certainly not for like the medium, the 14, I, I fit the 14 on a 45 inch fabric, no problem on the fold. So anything smaller than that certainly shouldn't be a problem either. Um, okay. What else? I, the only thing I, I don't like about this, I feel like these um, tabs, the place that they have you put them, is pretty low. Like, you can see when I stand up here, that that's where my sleeve lands when it's folded, when it's rolled up and the tab aside. I think if it was like a little bit higher, like that would maybe have been better. In fact, I like that better. <laughs> So I'm gonna just move my tabs, but just be aware that they seem to be a little bit low on the sleeve. View C on this, I'm not 100% sure, but it seems to me like View C, it doesn't have the cuffs for this sleeve, it's just like a hemmed sleeve. And um, I think they use a bias binding instead of the collar on View C. Okay, I think that's all I have to say about this. It's a cute shirt, it's, um, it is, a little bit time consuming I will say um, there are 18 pleats on the front and 18 on the back so that means 36 pleats altogether that took some time um, <laughs> and then of course trying to match them on the shoulders to make sure that they line up um, the collar was relatively easy the placket was relatively easy um, yeah the other the, the cuffs easy it's just that they are all a little bit more time consuming than some that we've worked on before. But I do, at the end of the day, like this pattern a lot. And I will probably make it again. I do, I originally wanted to make this in um, a light blue linen. But this fabric, this gauze fabric, first of all, reminds me of a shirt I had when I was in like 7th grade. Do you guys remember that? When, ever, when all, like almost every plaid shirt everywhere around like 1977 to 79, they all had like tiny bits of Lorax running through them. <laughs> That's what this fabric reminded me of. But um, it also was inexpensive, and I wanted to try this pattern first on something that wasn't too expensive before I cut into my blue linen. So I think I probably will make this again. I actually think that this would be a great shirt for um, the fall and winter. It'd be really cool uh, to layer things under, and a big sweater over it would be really cute. Um, it's already too hot for me to be wearing this here. <laughs> Even though it's gauze, it was like 92 degrees here yesterday and humid. That is it for Simplicity 9044. I will not be here next, will not be here this coming Friday. I will also not be here on June 15th. I will be back for our um, t-shirt dress, so along the Metro t-shirt from Trish Newberry. I'm going to do a sew along for that on Friday the 18th. Um, and that reminds me, I think I've been saying the hashtag for t-shirt for summer 2021 incorrectly. I've been putting plural t-shirts for summer 2021, and I believe it's actually t-shirt for summer 2021. I'll put that up here, but I'll also double check it for you and, um, write it for you in the description box. The other thing is when I come back, um, on the, what did I say, that's the 18th, Following that, I think I'm going to be laying off the actual sew alongs for a little bit um, just because my schedule is really sort of amped up for summer and I have a lot of stuff going on. I will still be here on Tuesdays, but I'll just be doing shorter videos, um, maybe some quick tutorials and some reviews and like pattern alterations and like changing things up a little bit. All right, guys. So until the 18th, happy sewing and I will speak with you soon.